Kristen here, reminding you not to do things. What I mean is, with same-day delivery for everything from gifts to groceries, you only have to do the things you want to do. To not do the other things, visit Shipt.com. That's S-H-I-P-T dot com. Your favorite band's about to play a sold-out show, and you definitely got tickets. And drinks. Now hurry and make it back to your spot. How's this person and that person? About 20 more. Ooh, watch out for feet. Hey. Just keep going. A little further. Oh, there's your friend. Over here. Right where you want to be. Close enough to see the set list. And they're definitely playing your song. When you're with Amex, it's not if it's going to happen, but when. American Express. Don't live life without it. Welcome to mini episode 207 of Real Life Ghost Stories. And I have one spooky story for you today. And the story comes from September the 14th, 2022. And this story comes from Mike Holmes. And Mike is a very talented illustrator and children's author. And he has written a book called The Weird World of Ghosts, which is definitely worth checking out. If you've got little ones and you're looking for a book to get them all about the weird world of ghosts or a nice non-threatening paranormal book then the weird world of ghosts is definitely for you so let's get into it growing up in skipton nestled right on the border of the yorkshire dales national park the last thing i ever expected to happen was for our family to gain the attention of the otherworldly the supernatural something about our beautiful rolling hills and picturesque surroundings made it seem unlikely that anything odd would ever happen there. But for as far back as I can remember, my family has been riddled with ghostly tales. It seems that every one of my relatives has experienced something strange, unexplained events that have stuck with them for their whole lives. Even the sceptics amongst my family have witnessed some kind of weird head-scratcher, and during reunions after a drink or two once the sun has set, It doesn't take long before we begin exchanging our personal tales of terror. Now I've heard most of the creepy tales my family has to tell and let me tell you there are some real pant-fillingly scary ones. But the one that has stuck with me the most over the years comes from my own mum. You see on the outskirts of town there is a large building erected in the early 1800s as a house for wealthy Victorian families. It was later converted into a nursing home for the elderly, sometime in the 80s. To reach this property, you have to drive deep into the countryside and up a long driveway sheltered by old trees that lean in over you, as if watching your approach. Given that this building is made with black brick and surrounded by trees, it always seems to be shrouded in darkness. Its grounds held its original iron fences, now rust-covered and twisted. Even old ponds with ornate fountains could be seen lost to the wild vegetation of a once well-tended Victorian country garden. Everything about this property spoke of its age. My mum's tale begins when she got a job there in the mid-90s as a carer during its run as a nursing home. She landed a spell pulling night shifts as they meant more money. But they also meant working in this building after dark which made the place all the more foreboding. I sometimes went to the home with her as a kid during the daytime, if she was ever picking up a wage slip or arranging her shifts for the following week. But I always waited in the car. Something about the place creeped me out. I had only been inside a few times, and it was everything you would imagine of an old stack in the country from a bygone era. A huge grand staircase greeted you as you walked inside the cavernous entrance hall. High ceilings cricked your neck as you looked up at their ornate cornices. Stained glass windows threw strange colours around the place on the rare occasion that bright sunlight fell upon its exterior. Garish floral wallpaper and dark wooden panels lined every room. All the floorboards creaked underfoot and everything smelt musty. 
As a child, it wasn't the elderly residents fussing over me that freaked me out, not at all, but rather the atmosphere of the place once you cross the threshold of the main entrance. The best way I can describe it is as if the place was waiting, waiting to do something, to show you something when you least expect it. Such is why I'd wait in the car as my mum nipped in. Safe to say I hated the place. Regularly my mum would come home from a night shift with a new tale about the nursing home, a new happening, as her and her co-workers would call them. The most regular occurrence at the property was the running. Always late at night and when all the elderly residents were tucked up in their beds, the staff would retire to the break room to unwind for an hour or so. But no sooner had they all sat down when they would begin to hear what sounded like two sets of feet chasing each other around the upper floors. Crystal clear, they would hear the distinctive thump, thump, thundering of feet along the corridor above their heads. The phantom running would then change direction and charge back the opposite way. Given that this was a nursing home and the staff all had a duty of care for the elderly residents, they had no choice but to go upstairs and make sure it wasn't a trespasser. But every time the member of staff who drew the short straw would go and investigate upstairs, they would find nothing only an eerie silence. It couldn't be a trespasser anyway, as the doors and windows were always locked. And it definitely couldn't have been the residents, as they were all pushing 100 years old and could barely walk, let alone run. Regardless, this running occurred maybe once to twice a week, and my mum would often return home saying, We heard them again last night. Creepy, I know but this was nothing compared to one absolutely baffling experience my mum had during her time there. This happened shortly before she left her position at the residence and I cannot help but think that it was this experience that played a role in her finally leaving the nursing home. It was another night shift and as such there was a skeleton crew working that night, three ladies in total, my mum, the manager and another carer. It was 1am and all of the elderly residents had been put to bed a few hours ago. The three staff members, including my mum, might as well have been working alone as they were all spread out in different parts of the building. As you can probably guess, being alone in any part of this former house could get pretty creepy. As such, it was important to do things that took your mind off the murk of the place when all was silent in the early hours. My mum decided to fill this spooky lull by grabbing something to eat. She walked to the far end of the building, away from the living spaces and communal areas, along a lengthy hallway and down a worn stone staircase that led to the little pantry under the house. A pantry accessible through a thick wooden door original to the building. My mum stood there under the dim light of the pantry's ageing yellow bulb and squinted about at all the food on the shelves. No sooner had she begun pondering on what to eat when she heard the distinct sound of cloth rustling, like a dress flowing around a moving body. It was coming from the other side of the heavy pantry door. About to say hello to whoever was there, my mum suddenly cut off, as the door, which she'd left slightly ajar, forcefully slammed shut before her very eyes. Not only that, but the light above her head then blinked out, plunging her into pitch darkness a light she could not turn back on, given that its switch was not on her side of the door. Quickly gathering herself, my mum said, Oi, I'm still in here, to whoever it was on the other side of the door, but no one spoke back. So my mum began to probe through the darkness towards the door, but as she did so, she heard the sound of keys jingling, followed quickly by the clunk-clink of a single key entering the door's large lock, twisting the mechanism and trapping her inside the lonely little room. I'm in here, she shouted, as she found the door's handle and pulled with all her might, but the door was locked tight. Now, my mum has a wicked sense of humour, and rather than immediately panic, she wondered if it was one of her co-workers playing a prank on her. So for a moment, she decided to give in and admit she'd been played. After finding the door in the darkness, she could hear the telltale sound of someone shuffling about on the other side of it. Now convinced that she was the butt of a joke, she uttered, All right, well done, you've got me, good one, to whomever it was on the other side. But after a few seconds, there came no answer. Once more, she said, 
Okay, good gag. Very funny. Yet still no answer came back through that old wooden door. Only the sound of moving clothes as if someone was just standing there. Still standing in the pitch black, my mum now began to get quite scared. Not taking any prisoners now, she shouted. That's enough now. I'm scared, okay? Let me out. I don't like this. It was at this point that she heard the light switch to the pantry on the other side of the door click back on. The room refilled with dim light and as her eyes slowly adjusted she heard the jangling of keys once again. A single key was now heard sliding into the keyhole and unlocking the door. At this point my mum was out for blood ready to pounce on whoever this was playing a trick on her. No sooner did she hear the lock click open, she grabbed the door by its old round handle and wrenched it open, only to find no one there. But she still heard movement, the swish of a skirt maybe, and the fall of quick feet heading up the stone steps before her and rounding the doorway at their peak. So my mum gave chase, knowing full well that the top of said staircase led only into a really long corridor. A corridor that had only one exit all the way at the other end. If someone was messing with her, she would see them running along the hallway, so she threw herself up those stairs in pursuit. Rounding the doorway and now in the stretching tunnel-like hallway, she paused with confusion as she suddenly found herself standing totally alone. She was convinced that she had been hot on someone's tail, but there wasn't a soul in sight. Not only that, but now everything was deafeningly quiet. No longer did she hear the sound of rustling clothes or the scurrying feet, as if the apparent trickster had just evaporated into thin air. Being driven by a cocktail of fear, anger and confusion, my mum marched through the quiet nursing home in search of her two co-workers for answers. The first she found was her boss, in the middle of the building, counting the next day's medications in her office. She looked like she had been there for quite some time. Naturally, her boss told my mum that it couldn't have been her as she'd been stuck in her office for just over an hour by that point. To which my mum quickly asked about the only other person working that night. And what about Claire? Where is Claire? She probed. Her boss informed her that Claire had been all the way on the other side of the building the whole night. In fact, Claire wasn't even in the building. They could both see her on CCTV, sitting outside in the car park having a cigarette. Baffled. My mum retold her boss the events of the past few minutes. How she'd been in the pantry. How someone had come down the stairs, slammed the door, turned out the light and locked her inside. Her boss then gave her a funny look before asking, Wait, you actually heard the lock? To which my mum frustratedly answered, Yes, twice. In response to that, my mum's boss slowly got up from her desk and ushered my mum to follow her back to the scene of the crime. They walked back along the stretching, empty corridor, down the stone stairs at the end, and finally found themselves standing before the old wooden door of the pantry. Once again, her boss asked, You're sure you heard the lock go? And once again, my mum, losing her patience by the moment, responded, Yes, the bastards locked me in, whoever has the keys. Her boss at this point, looking increasingly confused, just said, They couldn't have. What do you mean? My mum answered. To which her boss simply gestured towards the pantry door just below the old round handle. It was then that my mum's blood ran cold and a shiver ran the full length of her spine as she saw that the old door's lock had been painted over so many times that the keyhole didn't even exist anymore. Only a slight indentation could be seen where the keyhole now hid under years and years of differing strokes of thick paint. A key hadn't entered that lock in 60 years or more. And yet, to this day, my mum is convinced that on that night, some spectral figure, some long-forgotten resident of the building's past, had stood on the other side of that door, and with a phantom key, for a moment at least, brought that old lock back to life. That building sounds absolutely horrific. And I can completely understand younger Mike not wanting to step foot inside it because I don't even want to step foot inside it in my imagination while I'm reading the story. So imagine working there 
And aside from the building being something straight out of a horror film, I do genuinely think that nursing homes are very strange places in terms of paranormal or people's perceptions of the paranormal. It, I don't know if it's like an energy thing, if it's a people being close to death thing, or if it's something that people create in order to cope with the fact that they're working with death all the time. I don't know. I don't know what the answer is, but I do know that anytime we get stories about nursing homes, they're always weird as shit. So firstly, the footsteps running around the house at night time, terrifying. And obviously, as the people who are employed to care for the residents at night time, you are obliged to go and check. You don't have the luxury to go, um, yeah, I'm not just not going to do this, just not going to do it. You don't have that luxury. So you have to go and check and see if somebody's broken in, if there are residents up and about, whatever it might potentially be. But the idea of getting locked in a basement pantry, in a big scary old house, in the pitch black darkness, where a ghost has locked the door, is a nightmare. It feels like another you know, moment in The Sixth Sense where the kid gets locked in the cupboard and then gets like beaten up by a ghost or whatever. That's what it that's what it feels like. And yeah, there's an element of like mischief to locking somebody into a room, but it also seems to be quite malicious. Like locking somebody into a room in the darkness and not letting them out again until they admit that they're scared. Like it seems kind of punishment-y. Like there seems to be a real sense of malice behind it. And it kind of weirdly has like time slip vibes as well as being paranormal and ghostly. I think I would have been the same as your mum. I would have absolutely been feral in that room waiting to get out and batter the person who had locked me in. And then to know, to recognise... That door hasn't been locked in many, many years. Oh, I don't know how I don't know how your brain would cope with that. And you know what? I understand your mom leaving. 100 percent Thank you so much to Mike for sending in your story. Remember, you can find the weird world of ghosts on Amazon. I will pop the link in the description of this episode. Thank you so much for listening. The last story came from September the 14th, 2022. If you would like to send in your story, you can do so by emailing it to real life ghost stories podcast at gmail.com. If you want to find out more about the podcast, you can check out the website reallifeghoststoriespodcast.com. If you are desperate for extra content, you can sign up to Patreon, patreon.com forward slash reallifeghoststories, where for $5 a month or $2 a month, you get access to heaps of extra content, as well as every single main and mini episode completely ad free. And on that note, I shall see you next time. Venture X card from Capital One gives you premium travel benefits. Perfect for seeing Taylor Swift The Eras Tour. Presented by Capital One. Ooh, I do love her. Earn five times miles on flights and ten times miles on hotels through Capital One Travel. Enjoy your stay in Suite 13. Whoa, 13? That's Taylor's lucky number. The Venture X card from Capital One. What's in your wallet? Terms apply. See CapitalOne.com for details. Hey, are you ready? The Christmas countdown's on at JCPenney. Through Saturday, use your coupon and dash away with very merry savings on last-minute gifts across the store. Like fine jewelry stocking stuffers up to 70% off after coupon. And save up to 50% on comfy, stylish outerwear for the whole fam. Add curbside pickup to make your trip extra quick. We got your holiday. JCPenney. Offers good on select items through 1224. Exclusions apply. See store or jcp.com for details.